Welcome everybody to this pick a card reading or a pick a rose reading. So as you can see in front of you, we have four rose options, chocolate roses that you can choose from. And from left to right, we have the red rose, the yellow rose, the purple rose, and the pink rose. So if you look at the timestamps in the description or at the top of the comments, you'll find them listed according to the color of the rose. Again, red rose yellow, purple rose, and pink rose. And I just say the colors out loud uh, for you just in case anyone happens to be watching who has color blindness. <laughs> so I just want this to be accessible to everyone. So those are the four reading options. Now this reading is going to be about your love interest. And we're going to be asking what would they express to you about their emotions or their thoughts about your connection if they could find the words for it? Uh, and that's the title of the reading, more or less. But it's it's also sort of like, you know, in some cases, you know, there could be, maybe they can't find the words for it, but in some cases, maybe it's fear that's holding them back from these things. You know, fear of being rejected or fear of being vulnerable, fear of how you would respond, um, fear just of speaking their full truth, maybe. And in other cases, maybe it's a lack of consciousness because some of the messages that are going to come through in this reading may be more so from this person's higher self and from their more earthly self. Perhaps they just don't have the conscious awareness to articulate this because it, the awareness itself hasn't fully sunk in within them. So, so that's what we're going to be doing in these four readings today. So I want you to get still for a moment and get in touch with your intuition about which one of these readings is calling out to you intuitively. Now it could be the case that none of these call out to you intuitively and it, in which case you should not waste your time watching this reading, you know. Um, and I, I, I do want to make the point here while I'm at it that sometimes that's the case and you shouldn't approach a tarot reading pick a card video with the mindset that there always has to be a message there for you or that if you pick a particular reading, then everything said in that reading is necessarily true. You know, you want to balance intuitive ways of knowing, such as using divination like tarot or seeking out other types of psychic readings or whatever. You want to balance that with logic and with what the real life evidence is telling you. So use your own intuition along with whatever intuitive insights might be coming through a tarot reading and combine that again with your, log your logical evaluation of the real life evidence. When we think about our third eye chakra, a lot of times that's associated with intuition. We think that the third eye is all about intuition. But when we think about where the third eye chakra is located, it's located at the halfway point between the two hemispheres of our brain, as is the pineal gland, which is the physical part of our brain that is also often associated with intuitive ways of knowing. But where is the pineal gland located? It also is located at the halfway point between the left brain and the right brain. The left brain being the logical brain and the right brain being the more intuitive brain. And so when we talk about the third eye being the truest, clearest form of sight, what allows us to see truth in any situation most clearly, it does require a balance between those two approaches of the intuition and the logic. So that's something to keep in mind. And I also just want to say that in general, it is not helpful to allow any sort of psychic reading to dictate what your life or your truth is. So we can often go to tarot readings and ask what's going to happen, for example. 
but we have to be in touch with our own power and not give up all of our power to a tarot reading. Our fortune rests largely in our own choices. And so I think it's just good to remind ourselves of that and not give away so much of our power. What do you want to happen? What do you want to be experiencing? Most times what we seek is love, and we think that what we seek is a specific romantic partner. And, you know, you have to realize that the the love that you're truly seeking, first of all, it needs to be found within yourself, or else you're never going to be capable of receiving that love fully from an outside source. There's always going to be a little hole in your cup, and it doesn't matter how much someone tries to fill that cup with their love for you, you'll never be full and complete unless you are loving yourself from within so that your cup can hold that love and really receive it. But also, if what you're truly seeking is love, a healthy, mutually supportive love, you know, however you want to think of it, whatever your ideal experience of romantic love is, that that experience does not have to come in the form of any specific person. Or if it is a, a specific person that you end up with, the way that that love unfolds, the way that your love story unfolds, does it doesn't have to unfold in any particular manner in order for it to prove itself to be truly love. So we can get caught up in that as well, that, well, if they're not doing X, Y, and Z uh, in this particular, you know, like, you know, maybe they're buying me gifts, but what what I really want them to do is just say that they love me. Um, Just as an example, that's a difference of love language. It doesn't mean that love isn't present It's just a little bit more difficult, perhaps, to translate the message of love that this person is trying to give us. So anyway, that was a bit of a long spiel. But I'm assuming by now, if if you've even listened to all of that, uh, you probably have honed in on whether or not any of these four readings is meant for you. And probably you've chosen your reading by now. So... uh, Without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into the readings. I'm going ahead and I'm going to go ahead and start with the red rose. All right, welcome to everyone who chose the red rose. Uh, We have a whole stack of cards that we're going to work our way through, but we're starting out with this initial segment. And so what does this person want to, to express to you to start off with? We have medicating and free will. So this person would like to address some issues of, you know, maybe some addictive behaviors or an attempt either by you or them or perhaps both of you of medicating or numbing yourself in some way, using some sort of substance or self-destructive experience to help you cope with difficult emotions. Um They might be telling you that they would like to exert their own free will and make their own choices about what's best for them in terms of medicating, and they just want you to respect that, or it could be that they are respecting your own choices. Now, do they want the best for you? Yes, but if you happen to be medicating, they are acknowledging that ultimately that's your choice. They're respecting that. They do want the best for you. Um, they hope that what you would choose for yourself is love, or they're they're telling you that they are trying to choose love for themselves, to choose self-love, but they are experiencing um, a need to exert their own free will, and, and their free will might be leading them to sometimes make the choice of medicating. And we also have the Page of Swords, the Two of Wands, the Four of Wands, and the Moon. So this person also wants to talk about the fact that they they do feel like there's a mutual interest in having some sort of solid commitment, um, some sort of, um, they, they do want a relationship. So if you're not in a relationship, they do want that. And they sense that you want that as well. And if you're already in a relationship, then they want to sort of, you know, bring that relationship up to the next level here with the four of wands. They want 
um, some sort of public uh, expression of that, um, more of a solid commitment or a firm foundation. You know, they do want to build towards the future, so they want something solid. But with the Page of Swords and the Moon here, there's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, they might feel like there's a, that you have a lot of questions that you feel are unanswered about them or vice versa, perhaps a bit of both. And so even though there's this mutual desire to create this relationship or to further this relationship, they are also understanding that the two of you are really navigating some uncertain emotional waters, which might be what's leading to one or both of you uh, engaging in some sort of medication or numbing yourself in some way because the emotions are really intense and confusing and scary here with the moon card. Um, they're just acknowledging that both of you are really struggling with your emotions related to this connection right now. And they feel like both of you are struggling partly because there's so much that's unknown, so much that's uncertain. They want to embrace all of the possibilities. They're looking to the future. I see that here in the two of wands and also in the free will card. Like they're trying to be very optimistic. Sometimes they are really optimistic. Sometimes they're a little bit more cautious and fearful and so I feel like they fluctuate a little bit between those two states of being. But they do want something with you that's solid. They do want that. Um, but it's just an, an acknowledgement of like, hey, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult for both of us right now because we all, both of us have a lot of questions. And maybe some of those questions could be answered and then some of them may not because the future is always uncertain right? And we have to acknowledge that there's no way to completely know the outcome ever, no matter what. Okay, let me pull out the next set of cards here. All right. So we have some new cards laid out to further the reading for my Red Rose people. So we have the Very Soon card and the Unrequited Love card from the Romance Angels deck. So I feel like this person is feeling like this is probably an unrequited love. It's been an, a love that's been unfulfilled. Now this card defines unrequited love as there's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. I feel like it's been more that there's been so much uncertainty that has kept it from going the way that you've wanted it to go. But they feel like the love has been unfulfilled or unrequited for too long. And they do feel like very soon... Very soon, the two of you are going to be making more significant progress together here with the Wheel of Fortune card. Uh, and their compliments to you are, your enthusiasm is contagious. Thank you. And when I pulled this, uh, when I pulled it out, initially I thought it had said, we have a wonderful family. I'm happy for you. Uh, when I heard, when I got to that you at the end, I was like, oh, I've read this wrong. But I do think there's an essence here of this person likes the, the idea of having a family and they feel like the two of you could have a wonderful family together, a happy life. And then you have great taste. So those are just some compliments coming through. Um, I really do feel the enthusiasm, though, very strongly here with this Queen of Wands. They do sense a sort of optimism with you maybe just a zest for life or something about the way you approach life very boldly, you know, with the emperor and the queen of wands, there's a, there's a real fiery energy with you, a, a passionate energy of, uh, you know, they feel like you just really take control of your life, you know, and they, they may not have the words to admit this, or they might not be honest enough to admit it, but I think sometimes they even feel a little bit competitive with you. But more than that, they do just really admire you. They they feel that watching you and the way that you approach your life and really go after life and go after your goals and your dreams, um, it is very inspiring, you know, that sometimes they feel that they aren't you know, they see you as kind of being at the top of the wheel and they're like, well, why am I down here, you know? Uh, or why am I the one walking off in the distance here in this Five of Swords card? Um, but for the most part, they see you as an inspiration. 
Is there anything that they else that they want to say about that? Let me pull some other cards because I do feel like they do want to acknowledge that they, they do feel a little bit competitive with you at times in terms of your uh, zest for life and the way that you approach fulfilling your destiny in life. Is there something more that they want to say just other than acknowledging that they admire you but also feel competitive? I'm just going to use upright cards here. Princess of Wands. Yeah, they, they do want to tell you it really does bother their ego a lot. You know, this again, they we see you pictured with this fiery energy like, oh my God, it, it, it's excruciating to them sometimes. <laughs> you know, it really hurts them in their ego. You know, the way this devil card is pointing to himself, it's always, the devil card is always kind of about ego, but like, Especially the way that he's pointing to himself here, it just makes, it screams ego to me. And it's like, it makes this person realize that they do need to go through some sort of ego death here because they, they understand that this uh, feeling of being competitive with you is very unhelpful to the connection. So they want you to recognize that. And maybe you didn't even know that they felt competitive. This might be a completely internal struggle that you're not aware of at all, but... Uh, but at, at some level, they do want to communicate this to you. And again, some of these message, messages might be coming from their higher self more. Anything else that they want to say? Yeah, they're saying that I've been stuck in my ego because I see you succeeding in certain areas of your life. And it does make me feel like I'm not enough in some way. It makes me feel a little bit like I'm a failure. And I'm starting to see that uh, I need to be more loving and to be more loving even towards myself and not see myself as a failure. I need to focus more on my successes and not allow my ego to hold me back because it not only does it make me feel like a bit of a failure in my life, but it leads me to fail to show up for this connection and be successful in this connection with you in the way that I want to be. And then I feel like they're saying, you know, and then I, they're saying, and then I have to remind myself that even though I see you being victorious and successful in certain ways, I don't really know, you know, what it's like to be you. And maybe, maybe some of what I view as being so successful that intimidates me to you, maybe it isn't your ultimate fulfillment, actually, you know, maybe to you, there's something else that you're seeking out of life. And it could be that there's something that I'm doing in life. You know, maybe it's equal here. Maybe there's some way that I've succeeded in life that you haven't been as good at. And I'm just not recognizing that. Um, I'm only seeing things from my perspective. Some of them might feel that they have been more successful than you in terms of relationships. Like they see you perhaps as being very independent. And maybe because of that, you haven't been as successful in um, relationship experiences or something. And they're like, well, maybe that's an area where I am stronger. You know, that, that won't be for everyone, but that is a message that's coming through for some of you. But just in a more general sense, they are starting to recognize like, well, maybe, maybe there are things that I'm better at. Uh, I never looked at it that way before. Um, so anyway, they're trying to understand how the two of you balance each other out in terms of success. And they're trying to really have that ego death where they're not so cut up in their ego when it comes to you succeeding in life. Because they do love you and they want you to succeed. They want you to be happy, uh, of course. But, you know, they're experiencing this natural human experience of the ego uh, and it seems that they want to acknowledge that. Let me pull out the next set of cards here. All right, so I have, I've really increased my song lyric deck by like probably, it used to be like probably that thick, and now it's this thick. So the card that, the song that I randomly chose for you guys is Halsey's Graveyard. Now these, this isn't the complete set of lyrics because I can't fit them all in here, but, oh man, 
It's crazy when the thing you love the most is the detriment. Let that sink in. You can think again when, when the hand you want to hold is a weapon and you're nothing but skin. Oh, because I keep digging myself down deeper. I won't stop until I get where you are. I keep running. They say I may be making a mistake. I would have followed all the way, no matter how far. I know when you go down all your darkest roads, I would have followed all the way to the graveyard, Halsey graveyard. So they definitely are acknowledging that there's some element to this which has been really painful and perhaps toxic uh, for both of you. And then we have the Ten of Swords underneath, and it's the second time the Ten of Swords has come up in this reading. So this person just, they do want you to acknowledge how painful this has been for them. You know, like it's been so painful. It's really cut them open in a deep way. And, you know, back to that medicating card from the beginning, like this person is realizing that, you know, there are times when they would have been willing to, to, to be in that self-destructive mode with you just for the two of you to have the opportunity to be together. Um, so they, they know that that's not healthy, though. You know, they do want to move beyond that. They want the two of you collectively here with the Six of Swords. Instead of being, instead of the hand you want to hold as a weapon, they want the two of you to turn that outward. They want you to work together to sort of heal your demons, so to speak. They want this to be a more purified love because there's been a lot of self-destructive uh, tendencies that have arisen due to this love connection, due to your desire to be together. So we have the chariot card. They, they just really want to move on and leave all of this toxic energy behind. Uh, and they, they acknowledge that it's going to be difficult. So the two message cards we have here are you widen my perspective of the world and maybe our belief systems don't quite align. So they they feel like you have a, a somewhat different belief system from them and they like that because it's really widened their perspective, obviously, as it says here. Uh, but it also, it, it, sometimes it does make them question, you know, uh, you know, can we actually make this work or is it just going to continue to be toxic. You know, can we find a way to harmonize our, you know, the six of swords, the swords are about, you know, the mentality, your perspective, your thought process. Can we come together and the sixes are all about harmony. Can we harmonize our differences of perspective in a way that will allow us to improve both of our lives and improve our life together? so that we can move forward in a more balanced way. So they are concerned about some sort of difference in perspective. So that could be spiritual, philosophical, uh, religious, political beliefs, anything like that. Or it could just be not seeing eye to eye on things, like having lots of disagreements. Let's see. And then we have the Six of Pentacles. Yeah, they, they feel like you have a lot to offer them. And I feel like they're concerned that maybe you don't see it the same way. Like they might feel like when they try to offer their perspective, either they've experienced you being defensive or they're afraid that you would be defensive if they explained their own philosophy, ph philosophy or perspective of life to you. Um, but they do find so much that what you have to offer is so much, you know, that they, they really get a lot out of that. And they, they, they hope that you could get a lot out of their belief system as well. So when we have this, maybe our belief systems don't quite align this concern. It's not because they can't accept your belief system. Uh, it's more like they have a fear that you will not accept theirs, that, uh, or that they won't figure out how to express it, and so it'll make you sort of defensive. But they do feel like they have this optimism that the two of you could have this happy, harmonious coexistence despite these difficulties. So again, the major difficulties, it seems like, have to do with 
Um, both of you maybe have some self-destructive tendencies and that seeps into the connection. And then, of course, you know, you have some sort of difference of belief systems. And so you have to be able to harmonize that and, and be able to work together despite those differences. And, and then, of course, there's the ego stuff that we mentioned before. So let's see if there are any final messages from your person. And then we're going to sum up with some words of wisdom from your spirit guides. And the final words of wisdom may not have anything to do with this. We'll see when we pull out the cards for that. But I just want to see, is there anything final that this love interest of yours wants to say before we get your final spirit guide message? Three of Cups. I feel like, so we have the Three of Cups, Tower, Queen of Wands, and Ace of Swords. Um, this person wants to acknowledge that other people, besides the two of you, other people outside of the connection have contributed to some sort of falling out between the two of you. So it could be a third party situation. It could be friends or family just butting in. And, um, but th they're saying that there's been some sort of, I think there's, they've had some sort of epiphany about this as well. You're coming up as the queen of wands for the second time in the reading. They, I think they're seeing you more clearly because in the past, as it relates to these other people outside of the two of you uh, that are uh, other people that are affecting your all's connection with each other, they might have seen you as someone who is sort of instigating those problems. Like they might be have had a little bit of a sense of blame towards you or something, but it seems like they're having more of an epiphany now. Yeah, some sort of uh, problem caused by other people. Again, that could be a third party situation or, you know, like I said, friends or family interfering. They're like, I really felt the potential loss of you because of some sort of confusing dynamic related to other people. And it hurt so bad to feel that I could lose you for any reason. And it made me come to a, a more peaceful state of mind about this and a more compassionate state of mind. And I, I'm at a place right now where I'm not blaming you for it in the way that I perhaps have done in the past. I, I can see that it, it's not your fault. It's not necessarily anyone's fault. It's just a circumstance. Yeah, they, they're feeling like they are regretting. They, they had some suspicions or a wariness about you. Um, they didn't trust you, I feel like is what it was. They didn't trust you and they felt like you were... Hold on. Yeah, they felt like you were causing problems. Either you were flirting with other people or if it was like a friends or family type of thing, maybe they felt like... You were getting into arguments with friends or family and that was causing problems or something like that or maybe all of the above. I don't know. They just feel... They, they see things very differently now. They, they regret that they had this energy towards you of suspicion or blaming you. I think they're, try, they're seeing now that you, you were just trying to come to your own place of inner peace and harmony which they have now come to more. Um, that you both have been seeking the same thing, and they, I feel like it's just a lot of forgiveness. This person is forgiving you for things that they were holding against you for some time. All right, so the final thing that we want to look into is just uh, a final message from your spirit guides. So let me pull out those cards. All right, so... We have yearning. So this is your final message just from your guides. 
yearning, longing for someone, undesired separation and pining. So the overall, you know, situation that they want to address with you ha has to do with the fact that you are yearning for someone else to come along and fill your cup. And uh, let me try to get the lighting right so you can see this. I feel like your guides want you to kind of love yourself more. Um, and they want you to be able to communicate that with the world in some way. We have letters about communication. And it says, inspire with your story, not your words. So they want you to get more in touch with loving yourself. And they want you to show somehow demonstrate that to the world. We also have I love me to the moon and back. They feel like it's your guides feel like it's taken you a long time to come to this place of love and acceptance because you maybe have dwelled too much in this state of yearning. They are seeing that you are embracing more this energy of self-love than you ever have before. And they feel like that could be a real inspiration to other people. But uh, they're saying, <clears throat> you know, use your voice, say it loud. But it's like saying it loud simply through shining your light. You know, simply through awakening. That in and of itself is a gift to the world. You don't have to necessarily... Um, you know, preach to other people about how to become happy or to, how to learn self-love. It's more about just allowing that love to sort of shine that and radiate out from you. And that will lead you to be sort of a beacon to other people who are also learning how to embrace self-love more so that they don't have to exist in this sort of like toxic energy of yearning and pining and feeling like your cup will never be filled. You are coming to a point where your cup is being filled because you are loving yourself. So you're making sure that that cup is filled from within and that cup is uh, whole and complete and doesn't have any holes in it <laughs> that would allow love to seep out. And uh, yeah, it's been a long time. You've been working hard on this for a long time, maybe even multiple lifetimes, your guides are saying. And... They, they want you to be able to show the world. Now, I'm not saying don't use your words at all. There might be a way to do that. But I feel like they're saying the most important way that you're going to influence people isn't through any sort of words or articulation of this awakening to love within yourself that you have gone through. But it's more about um, people will see it. Because you'll be glowing. You'll be glowing from from the inside out. And they, they want you to know how important that is. That you are changing people simply by existing in this state of in this state of uh, self-love. And I think also I'm getting the message that, you know, this is a process still, you know. Um, they want you to continue to move towards this process. Is there anything else? Let's pull some tarot cards. What else do your guides want to say about this particular topic of self-love and allowing that self-love to show and to glow and shine out into the world? You are someone who's very emotionally intense. And because of that emotional intensity, it has made life quite difficult for you because you've been someone who who, who does struggle a lot with um, self-love and allowing yourself to feel worthy of love. And again, they just I feel like they just want to congratulate you that you've you've come to this point of like stability as it relates to your sense of worthiness. And they want to say, you know, perhaps you needed to go through these more difficult emotional experiences in your life in order to get to this state of stable self-love and um, just uh, this uh, state of understanding that you do have this self-worth, that you are so worthy of love.
And they, they just want to tell you that it is this worthiness that you're coming to now that is going to shift your energy from this one of yearning and pining to this one of I can accept love and sweetness. I can accept the love and sweetness that's coming to me. I don't have to yearn and pine and scrape my way to try to get to it. Love is going to come to me. Despite what my past experiences have been, as time moves forward, my experience can be different from what it's been in the past. They, they see that your guides see that you're recognizing this more and that you're willing to let fear aside so that you can experience more of love. And they think that's beautiful. And they want you to continue to let fear fall to the wayside. And it, it, this right now might be the most important aspect of your spiritual practice is to continue to allow fear to fall away so that there's more room for love to enter. So I think that's really sweet. I think that's beautiful. So guys, I really hope that this was a helpful reading to you. I want to thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you around the universe. Bye guys. All right, hello to everybody who chose the yellow rose. It comes off as a little bit almost like a chartreuse in this, but it's yellow. Um, all right, so let's start. We have a whole stack of cards to work through, but we're going to start out with this spread. And so we have non-action, recognition, and then and you all have four major arcana cards showing up in your tarot spread here. We have judgment, the world, the hanged man, and the star. So this person, despite any non-action, so this might be a situation that seems stalled. It might feel like this person is not really taking any action towards you. What this person would want to communicate with you, if they could, is that they do recognize that this is a very spiritual love, um, that this is a life-changing love, a very transformative, even here on the non-action card, we have a butterfly present. So this person feels like this love connection has dramatically changed their whole life. Everything is so different and it's changed it for the better. It's changed their whole perspective on life, the way that they view life. Um, it's given them hope in their darkest times when they weren't certain if there was a way forward in life. You know, it's just transformed them. So despite what the outward actions or lack of actions on their part might seem to indicate, they do want you to say that they they recognize this is a very high vibrational love that the two of you share, a very spiritual love. So that's just the initial message. I could go on and on about it. I mean, it's a, it's a very profound message, 
I just can't find any better words to express it than what I already have. So um, I don't know if I can convey the feeling of it, but they they do recognize and and they they're understanding that their actions or their lack of actions are probably making it hard for you to recognize that they do see that this is a true love. This is a true love. So let's see what else they have to say here. So, so again, they do feel sorry. You know, we, they, we have this card that says, I'm sorry, you're important to me, and I want you to know I'm sorry. They, they do feel sorry that they haven't found a way to outwardly show you how much they care. And they also, they wish you could have these moments of lighthearted playfulness. And they, they do feel like they haven't been able to show you that, you know, they haven't allowed you to experience the happy, lighthearted expressions of how much they care for you in the way that they wish they could. Uh, they also see you as someone who has a lot of integrity. You know, we have, oh, I don't think you see it on camera. I admire your integrity there at the top, but then also the high priestess makes me feel that way as well, that they they just feel like you're someone who is very wise and in tune with integrity, someone who really acts with integrity. Um, and as we all already saw in the previous cards, it says you inspire me to be a better person. You have really changed this person's life in some way. They are thinking about children, so they might be thinking about whether or not the two of you should have children. If you already have children, then um, that's on their mind, or if they're, one of you has children separately from each other, they're just thinking about all of that. We also have two pages down here, which can also indicate children. They... But I also feel like, so if, if there are children involved, then I think that they're thinking about that. Um, they're trying to figure out what would be the best way to approach the situation as it relates to children, either wanting to have them or, you know, children who are already involved. But I think beyond that, with playfulness and children, those two cards here, they 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 feel very childlike as it relates to this connection, like they, they feel like they don't have the experience that they need in order to approach you the way that they want to. Like they, they specifically, they don't know how to express themselves. They feel a little bit like a child sometimes compared to you. They want to be able to have more like lighthearted, flirtatious moments with you as well, but it's like they don't know how to proceed with that. Let me pull some other tarot cards to sort of elaborate this message. Yeah, they feel like they've been childish sometimes here with the five of wands, that they've been sort of childish, um, maybe picking fights or just, you know, just focusing on trivial concerns. They have a lot of regrets. They feel like they've been trying to move on in their life in some way. And in the meantime, you know, it's been a struggle for them to move on you know they have transformed because of you but it's like it's been difficult for them to take that full journey of transformation that they have known that they needed to take and they feel like you've taken that journey of transformation on your end so much more easily than them and they they just feel like you come across as so mysterious we have seven of swords here which in this particular deck just it seems so mysterious and then the high priestess is also that mysterious energy they, they just, it's like, they want to say, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> how do you, how do you just transform everything around you? How do you, you have so much integrity in the way that you just, um, you're always evolving. Yeah. 
They feel like you're always evolving and they don't know how to do that. They feel like it's so much of a struggle. And here you are, you're just rising up from the dirt, just brushing the crumbs off your shoulder like no big deal. And they're like, oh my God, I'm I'm really struggling here. Um, I'm struggling and you're just soaring. They want to say that they feel in awe of you and it, it intimidates them sometimes because they feel like because you are so powerful in the way that you transform yourself like this, they they feel like you don't really need them. Yeah. They feel like you don't really need them. And however, that insight of you don't really need them, actually that in and of itself is has been one of the major catalysts for them transforming because they're like, well, I shouldn't have to need someone to need me. I shouldn't be in that mindset of someone has to need me in order for me to feel safe in the connection. So that did lead them to some sort of transformation. They're saying instead of seeing it as a threat, instead of seeing your independence your lack of need for them as a threat, your ability to be whole and complete without them as a threat, they they realize I need to transform. I need to be whole and complete. I need to work on myself. So yeah, they really want you to know there are you know, multiple messages of this. They really want you to know how much you have really changed their life and been such a catalyst for that change. All right, so we have a song oracle card and some message cards and then some more tarot. We have the Empress, the Lovers, and the Page of Cups. This person is truly in love with you, and I feel like they do feel like you are definitely their ideal romantic partner. They can't imagine that anyone would be a better romantic partner. But again, we have another page. Here it's the Page of Cups. This person feels like such a child when it comes to expressing their feelings and even and even when the, in this these song lyrics, James Bay's Bad, it says, and I won't tell you what I want to. Um, you know, they also are not taking action, although they want to, I feel like. So this song says, just when I'm ready to get over you, you call me up. And then I crumble when you say you're getting over us, which I think for you might just be that they see you being okay without them. And that makes them feel like you're getting over them. The more I think about you, the more I keep the ghost alive. I feel like this person doesn't really ever stop thinking about you. The more that I'm without you, the less I know if I was right. And again, it's you pulling away and focusing on yourself and being whole and complete within yourself. That's what brings them these sort of recognitions that have been leading to their own change. I want you bad, but it's done. I'm bleeding out because we can't go on. I want you bad till I shake. I want what we had, but what's broken don't unbreak. And I won't tell you what I want to. What I want to, I'm falling through. I can't hide it, but I learn to. Yeah, they definitely hide a lot um, because they don't know how to express it. And then the message cards say, I still remember the moment we met. I have so many wonderful memories of you and also some that make me sad. I am very practical about love. It feels safer. And I think in general, this person is just gravitating a lot towards safety right now. Oh, the Page of Cups coming up a second time. But they, they want you to know that because you've changed him, we have changed him or her because you've changed this person's life you've led them to this change and we have the butterfly coming up again judgment also coming up for the second time it came up at the beginning of the reading this person is learning how to express themselves more and yeah they're they're learning how to be more direct i think um in the way that they express themselves. Let me kind of clarify this two of swords here. What does this mean? They're trying to find, they are trying to figure out how to express themselves towards you specifically. I do think that they might feel like you're choosing to move away from them though. 
and that's sort of blinding you to some attempt. They might be trying to get your attention somehow indirectly because they struggle to be more direct in their communication. They're trying to learn how to be more direct in their communication, though, because they feel like that's what's going to allow them to be successful because they are seeing that the more indirect methods that they've tried to use, that you're just not really, you're not really seeing that indirect communication. You're not getting it. Yeah, they want to have a successful, happy life with you. They want to plant that seed. Um, and they, they, maybe they've been just hoping that you'll get that message without them having to be brave enough to say it or bring it up. <laughs> it's funny, we have a little bird sitting here next to her watching her. And then here we have this crow <laughs> watching this woman as well. Yeah, this person, they, they, they have a very closed off throat chakra when it comes to you. Oh, there's a little bird here as well. Like, yeah, it's like this person, this bird is next to this guy's heart. Like they've been expecting you to understand what they want without them actually saying it out loud. <laughs> um, and what they want is a solid future with you. You know, we have Ace of Pentacles and Ten of Pentacles. They want happiness. They want a successful union with you. <clears throat> you know, they're also acknowledging that in order for them to be successful in this union with you, they have to sort of respect your own personal needs and boundaries. And I think that's part of what makes it hard for them as well because they're like, I don't, I don't know how to directly communicate what I want with you in a way that does, that is respectful of your independence. Um, Cause they, they're not really sure what you want. And so I think that's holding them back and keeping them in fear as well. So anyway, we're going to sum up the reading here with a message from your spirit guides. Now this message, this final message that comes through, it may be about this love connection and it might be about something totally different. We'll just see what it is. I think it probably is about this love connection because we have a lot of watery stuff here. Okay, so first we have water flight. Heaviness lifts, burdens are cast away, weight weightlessness. And then we have whales here. Whales, um, whales communicate to each other through song. Well, there are some species that do. The humpback, and I think there's one other species, they actually sing to each other. I feel like, um, I do think this message is about this love connection that your guides want to sum this up with. And they are saying that this person has been trying to communicate with you through music in some way. So if they're posting certain songs on social media, then those songs are meant to be messages to you. That's, the, that's a kind of one of those subtle, indirect ways that we mentioned before that they're trying to express themselves specifically to you. Um, it could also be telepathic. So there might be certain songs that you keep hearing. Maybe you're waking up with a certain song in your head. If so, I feel like it's a telepathic message from this person. Um, your guides also just want you to know that this person, whether they're male or female, is really trying to align more with their purpose and execute their life purpose. They also want you to know that the key to making this uh, connection successful is kindness, and that's from both ends. They, they feel like both of you are becoming more aware of how to be kind and com compassionate towards each other. And this is, this is letting this um, kindness and compassion towards each other, despite the difficulty of it, the difficulties that you faced in the connection, that is allowing you to cast off the burdens that are holding you back. And so it is bringing the two of you up into like a higher, um, uh, an easier emotional experience of the connection. And then we have the moon. 
And it says, create your own form of bliss. I feel like this final message has more to do with, you know, guiding you to connect more with your soul, connect more with your inner world, with your inner wisdom, and um, maybe not rely so much on what other people think is bliss, but just being more in touch with what you truly want out of life. Because I feel like you and your love interest are both kind of in that process of understanding more about living soulfully, living in a way that's connected to your soul's purpose. And a lot of times we can really get sidetracked trying to live the life that it seems other people would find fulfilling. Uh, and it can really get us off track with what is really truly our own personal bliss. So I, I feel like they want you to maybe do some more inner seeking. This is, again, this is a message from your guides. Um, or if you've been doing that, then they're congratulating you on that. And they, uh, they feel like if you would continue to do that, that would continue to be very helpful for you to be more in touch with your soul. All right. So that's what I'm getting for those of you who chose the yellow flower. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right. Welcome to everybody who chose the purple rose. We have a whole big stack of cards here, but we're going to start out with this initial spread. We have Faithless, Fall. We have the King of Wands, the Three of Wands, King of Cups, and the Hermit. So I feel like the initial thing that this person doesn't know how to talk about is something that happened in autumn. And it was some sort of experience that happened in autumn uh, between the two of you that led them to having a lack of faith. Or maybe they felt like it inspired you to have a lack of faith. But I feel like they're, they're saying that they... They felt like they had some sort of rival for your attention because we have two kings here. So they they didn't like that um, or, you know, um, yeah, some sort of rival for your attention. And these are kings, but whether this person is male uh, or female or whether you are male or female or regardless of who people are or who they're attracted, whatever gender people are attracted to, <laughs> they, they felt a, there was a lack of faith in the connection because there were other people who seemed to be rivals, um, romantic rivals who were present here. And they, they want to talk about how that, you know, maybe led the two of you to being alone and separate from each other that you both had to just do a lot of thinking and feeling about the connection, but weren't actually able to experience or move forward in the connection. It was hard to see how to move forward because there were these romantic rivals or something like that. So that's the initial message. I'm going to actually pull some additional tarot to kind of get more insight into what it is they're want to, wanting to say about that. So they just want to acknowledge it for one thing. Yeah, they feel like one of you was left alone here while the other one may have gotten into a relationship with someone else or something along those lines. Uh, or it, or they were afraid that you were going to get into a relationship with someone else or if they moved on and got into a relationship, they realized that that left you feeling very alone. Uh I feel like they want to say that maybe it was necessary, like maybe that both of you needed this experience. Whatever experience, it, whatever it was that happened, they're saying like maybe that experience was necessary for each of us in our own particular way in order to uh, lead us to experience greater personal growth. They definitely feel like it led them to some greater insights. 
And the insight that it led them to was the, 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 you're the one for them. Um, you know, so if they ended up in a relationship with someone else, it led them to this epiphany that the person that they really want to be with you is you. And if you're the one who went off and got into another relationship, oh my gosh, it, it shocked them that you did that. Uh, but but through that shock and that disillusionment, it led them to this sort of epiphany. They had to start seeing things more from your perspective. Uh, but they also had to evaluate more, what do I want? And so it did lead them to feel that the two of you were meant to be together. They, it, it caused a lot of difficult emotions within them. And they're like, I'm going to have to work hard <laughs> to be with you, the viewer. They they felt like, wow, this this has really taken me for a loop. It's taken me to some depths, to the depths of my soul emotionally, to places that I didn't know existed within me emotionally. And it's like, because of that, I know it's undeniable that you're the person who I would most want to be with, but... I'm going to have to work hard if I think that I can have anything to possibly offer you um, either to make up for the fact that I went off and had a relationship with someone else or to make up for the fact that I wasn't enough for you and you felt the need to go off and be in a relationship with someone else. Um, they just feel, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm getting. I don't know what else to say about that. But let's pull out the next um, segment of cards and see what else they want to communicate. All right. So we have your smile is contagious. You're a gift to those around you. I admire your big thinking. Yeah, this person feels like you um, have a beautiful mind, maybe a very artistic mind as well with the Empress and the Three of Pentacles here. They might feel like you're very, uh, like a some sort of creative genius or just that you're very smart. Uh, but you have a lot to offer the world. They, they love your smile. Um, they still have these undeniable romantic feelings, although there definitely has been some sort of separation, which we, you know, picked up already in the initial cards. Um, I just think it bears repeating that the Empress and the Two of Wands and the Three of Pentacles are all repeating cards. So they really feel like this, that you are their ideal relationship. They can't imagine someone being a more ideal partner than you, although it feels like, you know, there has been this separation. We have a woman on a bed in both of these. Um, I think they do feel like maybe, and we, yeah, again, this is a repeating message as well. We saw before that they kind of feel like it might have been necessary for the two of you to have this separation, that there, again, there may have been some sort of personal growth that each of you had to go through that was necessary and that the only way you could have ever achieved that particular personal growth was through the fact of the two of you being separated. So that's what they feel about that. But they do want to come back together and work on this. They feel like um, there's no other connection with anyone that would be more worth working on building than this connection with you, which they, they want it to be a relationship for sure. Um, they want to explore these feelings more. And specifically, they are hoping that this will result in a relationship or you know, if you've broken up, uh, coming back together into a relationship again. So let's see what else they have to say. All right. So the song Oracle card coming up is Demi Lovato's Sorry Not Sorry. Now I'm out here looking like revenge, feeling like a 10, the best I've ever been. And yeah, I know how bad it must hurt to see me like this, but it gets worse. Now you're out here looking like regret, ain't too proud to beg, second chance you'll never get. And I know how bad it must hurt to see me like this. Uh, anyway, you can read the lyrics. And this is only a portion of the lyrics. I couldn't fit them all on this card, but you can look the song up if you want. But 
Yeah, the, I feel like they also feel like you have kind of moved on from them and it hurt. It does hurt them, you know, like you've moved on and even though they do recognize that it may have been necessary, this separation, it did really hurt. You know, we have this message card that says, you've really hurt me before too, you know. I tried to hide it, but yeah, you hurt me. So they they know that both of you have hurt each other. They they kind of feel like you don't realize maybe how much it's hurt them though, um, at some level. And then that and then at another level, they feel like maybe you've purposefully tried to hurt them a little bit. We also have I miss you with a little sad face. Um, yeah, this separation is definitely getting to them. They they do really miss you a lot. They feel like, um, I, I feel like with this Eight of Wands, like if, if they're, if they've moved on to another relationship during this separation, they feel like maybe you, either you were a little bit mean to the person they moved on with, or that person was mean to you, <laughs> um, but they been, feel like there's been uh, just some sort of rivalry that's been a problem. And they, with the six of hazards here, I feel like they just didn't really know how to deal with that. Uh, they didn't know how to deal with that in a positive way, in a way that would move things forward in a positive way, something like that. Let me pull some clarifiers here. There definitely have been some sort of third-party situations, I feel like, that have happened. One or both of you got involved with someone else after this separation. And they didn't know how to handle that. So maybe, you know, they did see that you were the one that they were meant to be with, but they didn't really know how to extricate themselves from the relationship they were with, perhaps. It felt like a real uphill battle. They didn't know how to, for some of them as well, like they could see that you were hurting and they wanted to be able to be there for you in your time of sorrow, but they also didn't really know how to do that. They didn't know how to do that in a way that was appropriate because they were in a relationship with someone else, but they saw that you were really sad and that you were really struggling and having a lot of burdens Yeah, they just want to express that uh, in relation to certain maybe third-party situations, whatever those happen to be with you guys, they just, they didn't really know how to, they didn't know how to deal with it all. Let me get some clarifiers here for this Eight of Wands. I'm not sure what this is trying to tell us. They didn't know how to be there for you emotionally as it relates to third-party situations. Okay. Ten of Wands coming up again. Yeah, I feel like they saw you sort of vying for their attention or maybe being a little bit competitive with some other person. And... You know, they're admitting here a little bit. This might be coming more from their higher self, but they're admitting a little bit like it fluffed their ego, sort of. They kind of liked it on an ego level, <laughs> the fact that you might do that. Um, but they also saw it as a burden. Like, they did feel like, you know, this does sort of complicate things or make it more difficult for me to know how... To bring the two of us into this level of commitment. Like if that's what we're meant to have. Um, I want to have that with you. But something about way, the way that you might have interacted with. A, ro you know, a romantic rival or someone who is a competitor for their attention. They liked it at the ego level. But they also were trying to figure out. Well what does that mean about you as someone that I would want to have 
a committed long-term relationship with, or how does that affect our ability to have a committed long-term relationship? We get Three of Swords coming up again. Yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of pain here. A lot of third-party issues causing significant pain, and they, they wanted... I feel like this is someone who, if they were in a relationship, they wanted to be able to express their love to you even though they were with someone else, but they also just didn't feel like it was right or that wasn't that wasn't acting with integrity. And they, they might have also felt like you wouldn't even have respected them for doing that if you were involved with someone else. Like they, they wanted to be there for you and reach out for you and comfort you. Um, but they're like, I'm smart enough to know that you probably would have chewed me out if I had while I was dating someone else. If I had reached out to you to communicate with you, I'm smart enough to know that you probably would have chewed me out about that. And they're saying... I needed to figure out how to become single and maybe even spend some time being single before I could really approach you again. For some sort of significant committed relationship. Yeah. They feel like they were they they want you to know that as it relates to any sort of third party issue they were trying to act with integrity. So they want you to understand that. Um, and then they feel like they did hurt you in that process because they weren't able to be there for you to help you through your own pain. But they have a lot of complicated feelings about it because they also feel like the two of you kind of needed this separation. And if you're in separation... You know, of course, you might need to also date other people during that separation. That might be part of the process of personal growth as well, learning through these other relationships. So it's like they know that this hurts you, but they, they, they didn't know how to be there for you and comfort you at the same time. It was just a complicated dynamic. Um yeah. So let me see. The final messages we're going to get here are going to be just from your spirit guide. So we'll see uh, in the end what your spirit guides have to say as well. Okay. So I intended for that last portion just to be, this last portion just to be whatever your spirit guides need to talk to you about. For those of you who chose the purple rose. And I felt it may or may not be about your romantic connection. I do feel here that it is about the romantic connection, though, because we have this air card. This is very romantic. Breathing deep, entering into life, exchange of life, bringing energies. So your guides do want you to know that you and this person are, are very significant to each other. They want you to... It says, you know, magnifying glass, get more info, clarity. Um, and then just as your eyes adjust to darkness, you will adjust to this. So whatever is going on in your connection right now that you've been struggling with, they're saying you can adjust to it. And more importantly, especially with eagle and magnifying glass, it's really about having a clear vision, having a clearer perspective on what's actually going on here. There is no lack of love between the two of you. There might be a lack of communication. There might be a lack of a relationship. But there is certainly no lack of love. And your guides would like you to be able to rise above the present circumstances here to see the big picture of that so that you can know that this person does truly love you just as you love them. They say fear is natural. Courage is exceptional. So fear might be leading you to doubt that this person does care rather than understanding that, you know, whatever the current circumstances are, although they might be difficult, may also be necessary. They want you to have the courage to see the truth of this situation, which is love. 
We also have bouquet, happy, harmony, beauty, contentment, reconciliation, love, and then be your own BFF, best friend forever. So, you know, if you are still in separation from this person, your guides just want you to be there for yourself. Um, you know, treat yourself with the romantic gestures that maybe this person isn't available uh, to treat you with. Buy yourself flowers, treat yourself to a nice dinner and a movie or whatever it is that you are wanting to experience. Um, show up for yourself right now and that takes courage too, right? Um, but yeah, I think they just want to tell you that this is a moment and it's an, a necessary moment and you are okay and you will be okay. All right, so for the folks who chose the purple rose, I hope that this reading was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around the universe. Bye guys. All right, welcome to everyone who chose the pink rose. So we've got a whole stack of cards here to work through, but we're going to start out with this particular set that we've got out here. So we've got Foolish and Soulmate. We've got Five of Swords, Three of Cups, Four of Swords, and Ten of Wands. So this person definitely feels that they acted foolishly in some way. So that's one thing that they would express to you if they could figure out how to... <sighs> They acted foolishly and it caused them a lot of pain. You know, they may see that it caused you a lot of pain too, but they're just feeling the uh, repercussions personally of the actions they chose. You know, they they do realize that you are their soulmate and that this is a true love that they have with you and they feel like they really messed it up. I think specifically they may feel like with the Five of Swords that they messed it up Um just by being petty, maybe playing games a little bit too, like, you know, just getting too caught up in their ego. Some of them may have felt like they, you know, they tried to make you jealous as a way to sort of pull you in and that back backfired on them with the three of cups. I'm getting that. They, they want you to know that they've really done a lot of thinking about that. Uh, they've got done a lot of thinking about their own choices as it relates to this connection. They've done a lot of thinking about the mistakes that they feel that they've made. Um, as time has gone by, they do understand what went wrong between the two of you more clearly. And in particular, they understand their own role more clearly in what went wrong. I'm going to pull some clarifiers here for the... Ten of Wands. Yeah. They don't know how to make you see this, but they do care about you. And I feel like some of you are probably... In separation and what they want is to reconnect with you but they they feel like you're so distant from them and also it's almost like they feel like you're a better person than them almost like they they feel like they're very caught up in their ego and maybe caught up still in like drama or that they feel like their energy is very toxic and they, they see this being more like pure and innocent and high vibrational and um, they just don't know, they don't know how they would be able to reconnect with you given all of that. that in a sense, they don't feel like they're good enough for you. I think that they do, they do feel inspired to try to become a better person here. But they don't feel like you see any of this, you know, like they just feel very unseen by you. They don't feel like you see them. What is it that they would want you to see? They, they want you to know how hot they think that you are. <laughs> 
They're very sexually attracted to you. They want you to see that. They definitely want you to know that. They feel like they're on thin ice with you, sort of. And they want you to know... There's Ten of Wands coming up a second time. They want you to know that this... It hurts them. It causes them a lot of burdens to feel that they are on thin ice with you. Because they want to be sweet with you. They want to have more of a connection with you. They definitely want to be able to express it in some sort of physical way. You know, through kissing or whatever. Um, yeah, they just, they feel like they can't get over you. And it's causing them a lot of pain. They feel really stuck right now because they don't know how to reconnect with you. They don't feel they're good enough. But they can't get over you either. They're trying to just allow destiny to unfold right now. Sort of like if if we're meant to be together, then I'm just trusting that something will happen that will bring it about. Some of them might be choosing to be in another relationship. Yeah. Some of them are definitely choosing to be in a different relationship other than to be with you because it just feels easier or they, you know, the whoever they're, if they're in a relationship with someone else, it's because they feel like they're more on the same level as that person, whereas they view you as being somehow above them. Um, and they, this is someone who wants to feel in control, in charge of their life and, and so they don't like being in a relationship with someone who seems to be better than them because it, it, it definitely triggers their ego. But they do want to work on that. They do recognize that that's an area where they need to work on, where they shouldn't be so intimidated by that. Uh, and they do want to, you know, like I said, you do inspire them to sort of like Try to live differently, try to approach life differently in a quote-unquote better way or more evolved way than what they have been. So let me see what else they have to say to you guys. All right. So we have trust and true love. So uh, this person definitely wants you to know that this is true love. From their perspective, it's definitely a true love, even though... Uh, it could be that circumstances have made it difficult for the, to, you, the two of you to come together. And we have you inspire me and then your example inspires me to be better. We already saw that before, that they do kind of want to be a better person because they want to be, you know, at the same level as you. And then we have many of my favorite memories are with you. So they really cherish the memories that the, the two of you have created together. I think part of, uh, like a really big part of what inspires them about you, though, is that, you know, you go through these periods of real turmoil or difficult times, but then you come out of it even stronger. And then you go through another period where it's like, gosh, things are just so catastrophic. You've been through real difficult times. And then again, you just come out of it shining and you're never giving up on life. You're like, you know what? I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to try again. And that's the thing that most inspires them about you, is that. Uh, what else do they want to say? What else as it relates to this? Yeah, they, they also go through periods. <laughs> nine of Swords coming up on top of your Nine of Swords. They also go through periods where life is super stressful. You may realize it or you may not. They feel like you come out of it stronger than they do, but they're learning from you how to... I think they're learning how to get in touch with their emotions more because of what they've learned from observing how you approach difficult times. Yeah, and it's sort of like they're learning because they feel like you, you never stop... You might stop smiling when you're going through the worst of it, but you come out of it smiling. And I feel like they're like, you know what? I need to learn how to do that, to go through my death process, what feels like a death, right? Um, I need to learn to smile like this little skeleton is doing. 
smile, smile despite how hard it gets. Um, yeah, you really inspire them a lot. It's like they feel like you're so wise as well. Like you, the way that you approach life demonstrates to them without even words. It's just your example shows them how wise you are. That you see beyond some sort of illusion that the painful events that you experience in life to some extent is just an illusion. And yeah, they just they learn so much from your approach to life. So let's get some final messages from them, and then we'll hear from your spirit guides. All right, so your song oracle message is Elvis Presley, Fools Rush In. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread, and so I come to you, my love, my heart above my head. Though I see the danger there, if there's a chance for me, then I don't care. Fools rush in where wise men never go, but wise men never fall in love. So how are they to know? When we met, I felt my life begin. So open up your heart and let this fool rush in. Yeah, so this person is lo in love with you. They feel like they're in love with you in kind of a foolish way almost. They definitely have a lot of anxiety and fears though. Um, you know, they're talking about in the song, my heart above my head. They, they try to focus more on their feelings of love for you and not so much on those fearful thoughts that they have, which they definitely have a lot of because we have the Nine of Swords coming up again. And what's interesting here as well is like, I feel like, so they don't want to be having these fearful thoughts. They want to rise above the those as well. They want to move past this anxiety because they feel like that's what you do as the Queen of Swords. They, they feel like you aren't so anxious as they are, that you're not so fearful. Um, but they, it kind of makes them nervous because, you know, they, they, I feel like they think that you can see right through them and they don't want you to know how anxious they are. They don't want you to know kind of like how neurotic they are when it comes to this or how stressed out that they get and they're thinking when it comes to you. But they, they feel like you do see it. They're, they're scared that you see it. They're scared that you just see right through them. And then the message cards, one of us would have to make significant life changes to make this work. So let's take our time to see if it's worth that. And we did see before that they might be in a relationship with someone else. And if so, that relationship feels safer to them in a way. Um, again, because they just have this all of this anxiety that, that they're not good enough for you. And then I have no idea what to do to make this happen with you, but I do want it. They want to be with you, but it seems very complicated. Um, they have a lot of anxiety about it, some self-worth issues as well. Like they do want to rush in like a fool, but I feel like there are, you know, these other circumstances that make it, you know, they do, they are in touch with their logic enough with the Ace of Swords that they are not doing that, I feel like. Um, yeah, so let me just see, is there anything else related to this that needs to be elucidated? Yeah, I think it's just more like they want to mirror the sort of refreshing positive they see you as very positive and optimistic in your approach to life and they just want to mirror that I think um and kind of like build up self-confidence I think that they are aware that they have self-esteem issues they don't want you to know about it <laughs> they think they're afraid that you might know about it anyway but they they want to work on healing their own self-worth issues um they want to be as confident and self-assured as they see you as being now you may or may not actually be that but they see you as being that way and they want to be able to match that energy so let's sum up the reading with some final messages from your spirit guides all right i had meant to pull these three cards with the last portion of the reading but 
we'll just take it as uh, that that's the way that it was meant to be. So what do your spirit guides want to say? I do think, you know, when I set up this reading, I was thinking that the last portion, the spirit guide message may or may not even be about the love connection. But in all four readings, it has been about that. Uh, so we have vulnerability. Open your heart. Allow yourself to be tender. They do, your guides do want you to kind of open up more to this person and just allow them to love you or let yourself receive the love that they do have for you. They they also want you to kind of see like that it has been quite a struggle for this person. Now it's interesting. We have a church here on the five of pentacles. It's supposed to be a church. It kind of looks like a barn in this particular deck. But on most cards, it's a church that they're standing outside of. And then we have the church coming up underneath. I feel like for you guys, there might be some sort of uh, issues of social uh, acceptance or like uh, morality, uh, religion, um, you know, expect societal or religious expectations that are coming into play with the two of you. And the little um, affirmation message that's coming up with that set of cards is, the world is yours. If you want to dance, then dance. Um, so it could be like, if this is a love that you do want to experience, then your guides are wondering, why are you letting social convention keep you from that? Like, why are you standing out in the snow when there's all this love and warmth here? Um, I don't think that they're encouraging you to like hurt anyone or doing, do anything that's immoral per se, but they are asking you to think about, you know, why would you want to deny happiness? If happiness were available to you, why would you deny that? So you, you deserve to enjoy happiness, right? We also have the wheel of fortune and the child, innocent beginnings, what is perceived as a negative could turn positive if the lesson is learned. There is definitely some sort of lesson here to be learned. I feel that the two of you were, this was sort of a destiny or a fate, that the two of you were meant to be brought together to learn some sort of lesson about how to approach life in sort of an innocent and spontaneous way, uh, we have the word tender showing up here, and it was allow yourself to be tender. Like how to be in touch more, like maybe how to reconnect with that sense of childlike innocence within the within you. There's something about this connection which does realign you with that, and your guides feel like that's a really important part of the message of this connection. And then we have temperance, and we have Celtic knot. Divine Union, Love of a Lifetime. Uh, to me, the Temperance card is also like about a spiritual union. And I feel like your guides are just saying, this is a very significant spiritual bond, an eternal love of love of a lifetime that the two of you share. And they want you to acknowledge that, you know, despite whatever the circumstances may be, despite what choices you might decide to make as it relates to this person, you deserve to uh, be able to experience love and appreciate the fact that this person loves you and enjoy the dance of life, if you will. And so it's also interesting. We have this little affirmation card that says, drink more water. It's your life force. And then on this card, she has, you know, this is all about balance, right? On this side, she has like the chocolate cupcakes and the martini. And this side, we have the vegetables. Uh, oh, and the, the laptop. And on this side, she has a book. She has a glass of water and she has her veggies. So... <laughs> And then we have drink more water. So the glass of water, they do want you to drink more water, your guides. They do feel like uh, that's an important thing for you to do, that you could be neglecting. Or if you have started to drink more water, they do want to congratulate you on that as well. But yeah, they, they uh, if you are already drinking more water, they want to encourage you to continue with that. And they want you to know that it's important. <laughs> I want to pull a clarifier on that. Why are they... Why do they want to talk so much about water? It's almost like 
it's like the the form or the material uh you know water is symbolic of love and oh you know what it is like they want you they do want you to literally drink more water but it's also like they want you to drink in the water of this person's love there might be some sort of issue of morality which is making you feel like it would be wrong even to accept the fact that this person does love you or something. And they're saying love is love, you know, like <laughs> there's no, there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, being filled with love. Um, there might be certain behaviors that could be questionable, right? Or that could uh, cause pain in other people, but just allowing yourself to sort of be bathed and bathed in the experience of someone loving you, someone caring so much and have, having these tender feelings for you. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And they, your guides want you to allow to your cup to be filled, uh, literally and figuratively. But there is some sort of like connection it isn't just symbolic i feel like they're saying that water isn't just symbolic of love it's almost like and i have my water bottle here because i'm trying to drink more water so this is a message to me but it's like they're saying it's almost like you could think of water not just as symbolic but the actual physical embodiment of love in a sense so when you feel yourself more with water you are filling your cup um, it is an act of self-love and it does help you to connect more in a strange sort of way. They're saying, you know, maybe it's hard for you to understand the connection. Um, but being more filled with actual literal water does somehow um, allow you to experience love more fully in a, in a way. So I feel like that's what they're saying. So in any case, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you really enjoyed this reading and got something helpful out of it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.